What's going on folks? I'm Des with Desfit and this is the new Apple Watch Series 5. So with the new Apple Watch Series 5, there's really only going to be one big difference between the Series 4 and that's going to be the new always on display. So honestly, I thought this review would kind of be easy. I do all my standard testing for the sports and fitness side of things where I test it for running and cycling both indoors and outdoors, weight training and high intensity interval training, some gym based cardio as well as take it for a dip in the pool. And then during all that, I'd make sure to test the battery life using the new always on display as well as disabling the always on display to see if there would be much of a difference. But what was interesting is that there seemed to be some differences in terms of how the Series 5 perform in the fitness capacity compared to the Series 4, although theoretically they should perform exactly the same. Because there wasn't any change in the hardware when it comes to the GPS nor the heart rate sensor, but for some reason I still saw some differences. Now, really quick before we dive in, if you haven't checked out my in-depth review of the Series 4, I'll have a link for that video down in the description below. But just like that video, I'll be going into a great bit of detail of how the Series 5 performs in the fitness capacity. I'll be showing you a lot of real data just so you can get a better idea of how it's gonna work for you. And this sort of testing and the amount of work that goes into this sort of video does take a bit of time and effort. So if this video does help you out at all, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below as it helps the channel a lot and I appreciate it. So first off, let's talk about that always on display. It's something that people have been wanting and allows you to glance at your watch without having to make that deliberate gesture to see what's on your screen. And although the gesture to wake motion was very predictable, sometimes it just wasn't quite quick enough for me to be able to glance at my data and still keep my eyes on the trail. So let's say for running, for me to be able to quickly glance at my pace, sometimes that extra second or two can be a little bit annoying. So that always on display does solve that issue. Now, what's great is that you can disable the always on display and just revert back to the gesture awake behavior. And I was really curious to see if this would make much of a difference in battery life for daily use as well as during a GPS activity. So what I did was I had the Series 4 and Series 5 just in complete standalone mode and not paired to my phone. So that way it was utilizing the onboard GPS and that way it would also eliminate all other variables. So here's some figures after some bike rides with the always on display being enabled as well as disabled. And what you can see is that disabling the always on display does in fact save you some battery, although it's not a drastic difference, but where it will make a difference is in a daily use standpoint, where I was getting about 24 to 30 hours with the always on display enabled and easily a day and a half if I were to turn the always on display off. Now, what I would love to see is an option where you could enable the always on display just for activities and then it would just automatically revert back to the gesture control for the rest of the day. And this would kind of be the best blend of both worlds where it would have the always on display enabled for a situation where you would really need it, such as seeing your data really quickly. And then the rest of the day, it would just maximize the battery life by turning that feature off when you may not need it. And this is just something that could be added via a software update. All right, so now onto the fitness side of things and how the Apple Watch Series 5 actually performs in the sports and fitness capacity. So for being known more of a smartwatch than a sports watch, the Apple Watch Series 5 is a surprisingly capable device having the ability to track running both indoors and outdoors, cycling both indoors and outdoors as well, swimming both indoors and outdoors, plenty of gym-based profiles, as well as a host of other workout profiles like I was mentioning earlier. For outdoor activities that utilize GPS, the Apple Watch Series 5, as well as 4 for that matter, advertise about 6 hours of battery life. And based on some of those previous examples that I shared you, I think it should be able to get that. So I think for most people, you should be able to easily finish a marathon or go for a good long hike. And it should exceed that 6 hour claim, although you may not have much battery when you get home. All right, so now on to more of the fun stuff of how the Series 5 actually tracks activities using GPS, the barometric altimeter, as well as heart rate. For GPS on this run here, we see that the distance and pace were very close to two other devices, although this was kind of an easy test for GPS since this was pretty much just a square. This next example here is a trail run where I was making a lot of turns in some dense tree cover and the Series 5 lost about six one hundredths of a mile compared to the Series 4 and two other test devices. What's interesting about the GPS tracks here though is that the Series 5 seemed to be a little bit more detailed than the Series 4 where we see the notorious smoothing of GPS tracks throughout the run. In this area, it just kind of blew right through the turns entirely. For road biking, again, compared to the Series 4 and two other reference devices, we see the distance match up quite nicely as well as average speed. You'll also see the elevation match up quite well and looking at the GPS tracks, good stuff except for the fact that it again just kind of blows through some corners like they aren't even there. On this longer ride here, where it was kind of a mix of road and mountain, we see some nice comparable figures with both distance and elevation. So in regards to how the Series 5 tracks distance and elevation using its onboard GPS and barometric altimeter, I have nothing to complain about there other than the fact that they do smooth out those tracks. So I would like to see just a little bit more detail there. 
Now, before we get into heart rate, and you're definitely gonna to wanna to stick around for that portion, I also do wanna talk about the distance estimation when it comes to indoor running, as well as automatic workout detection. So with the Apple Watch Series 4, as well as Series 3, I found the indoor running distance estimation to be astoundingly good, and the Series 5 is pretty darn good as well. I tested this quite a few times and it was always pretty close to the distance recorded on the treadmill as well as compared to the Series 4. Although strangely, the Series 4 was a bit closer on most of the tests. And then also really quickly, the Apple Watch also has automatic workout detection which can detect some common activities. And just like the Series 4, what I found is that it usually takes about three to three and a half minutes for the watch to recognize if you're doing a workout and then up pops a screen that prompts you to start a workout along with a little haptic vibration. What's cool about this is that it's very good at knowing exactly when you actually started your workout. So in this example here, it also will give you credit for the entire distance of this short treadmill test. The bummer is that it still does not seem to track your heart rate for those first three minutes or so before you actually press the start workout button, which is a perfect segue into heart rate, which is by far the most interesting portion of this review. So the Series 4 had the best wrist-based optical heart rate sensor that I've ever tested, so I was expecting pretty much the exact same thing out of the Series 5. However, there were some occasions where the Series 5 was a bit off. So in the following examples, I not only tested the Series 5 against the Series 4, but against other devices as well. But most importantly, I always tested with an external chest heart rate strap, which arguably produces very accurate results, as well as an external arm heart rate strap, just again for a little bit of backup validation. On this first run here, it didn't lock on heart rate for the first two minutes, and I did see sort of the same trend where it would take anywhere from 30 seconds up to two minutes to acquire heart rate. So you'll see that on a lot of these following examples. And for every test that I do, regardless of any device, is that I usually actually hang out nice and still while on the start screen just to give the watch an opportunity to be able to acquire heart rate before actually working out. But going back to the graph, then you can see that it tracked about 10 beats per minute high for about 4 minutes straight, and then later in the run it tracked anywhere from about 8 to 13 beats per minute low. On this next run here, we see something very similar where it tracked high for the first portion and then dipped for some of the second portion. This is very interesting. Now, I won't say that it was all terrible by any means. So here's another run where it's closer. It's straight a little bit, but not as bad as those previous two examples. And then here's a treadmill run where both the Series 4 and Series 5 did a pretty good job other than the beginning of the workout where there was a little bit of freakiness going on over the first minute or so. And then on this indoor interval workout, the Series 5 did a pretty good job, and there's actually not much to complain about here. But heart rate for running was a little bit hit and miss where it seemed to have a little bit more of a challenge with higher intensity runs, but it did do a little bit better with the lower intensity steady state runs. For cycling on this ride here, I had some pretty good results and overall I'd call this pretty good. However, you'll notice that on these three occasions where my heart rate increased, it had a hard time keeping up. The Series 4 also didn't track perfectly with these three occasions, but it did do just slightly better. However, then here's another ride where things got pretty funky. On this second half of this ride, there were all these little mini spikes that were occurring. And this was really, really strange because this was a nice steady road ride and I made sure not to stand up to not introduce any wrist flexion. So with indoor cycling, there's gonna be a lot less variables and there's not gonna be much in regards to the wrist movement. But strangely, we do see a few blips throughout the course of this ride. At the beginning, there's some small drops as I increased heart rate and then it spiked a bit around 30 minutes in. And again, I have the Apple Watch Series 4 on one wrist and then the Series 5 on the other, and we aren't seeing anything strange from the Series 4. On this next example, we see that the Series 4 had a little freak out at the beginning, but then it settled in. However, then we see that on at least four occasions, as my heart rate increased, the Series 5 had a hard time keeping up where the Series 4 did just fine. Now, mountain biking, which is the activity that I primarily do, it's an activity that's notoriously bad for any wrist-based heart rate sensor just because there's a lot of wrist flexion and a lot of vibration that happens. So I'm not really gonna hold anything against the Series 5 for this, but there actually is some interesting stuff to see here, especially when compared to the Series 4. On this ride here, this was kind of like a half road, half mountain bike ride where at the beginning and end were road segments and then the middle portion being the mountain portion. At the beginning, you'll see the Series 5 spike a bit where the Series 4 was just fine. Then when things got a little bit rougher in the middle, we see the Series 5 did stray off quite a bit where again, the Series 4 did just fine. And then this example here is a little bit better, but what you'll see is that the same thing with the heart rate not locking on at the beginning. And then there were a few spikes here and there on the second half of the ride. And now onto weight training and high intensity interval training, which again is gonna be another activity that's gonna be notoriously hard for a wrist-based optical heart rate sensor. And what we can see here is that it's not bad, but it really depends on the type of weight training or high intensity interval training that you're doing. This particular session was a mix of movements where my arms weren't swinging that much and was comprised of seated low cable rows, lat pulldowns, crunches, 
box jumps, close grip pull downs, and then finishing up again with some box jumps. However, on this example, you'll see stuff start to fall apart a bit where these were exercises that involved more wrist motion like curls, tricep extensions, and then at the end here, I was slamming and throwing around a medicine ball. I think what's important to see here is that at times, the wrist-based optical heart rate sensor was close to other reference devices, but at others, it wasn't. Like in this example, there's gonna be some latency where even though I am perfectly still, it wasn't quite in line with the chest and arm heart rate strap, and it took a little bit for it to catch up, even at a lower heart rate. For the stair mill, it did perfectly fine, but just note that I didn't use the handrails as that, again, can cause a bit of wrist flexion, which could produce some inaccurate results. For the elliptical, there will be a little bit of gripping and wrist flexion if you do choose to use the handles. And we can see here that the heart rate was a little bit less accurate in this scenario. However, again, look at the Series 4 heart rate in orange. It stayed on track for basically the entire workout where the Series 5 jumped around a little bit and then lost it at the end. All right, so now on to swimming. So for pool swimming, the Apple Watch allows you to choose your desired pool length and then you can change from meters to yards or vice versa by long pressing the start screen. When you start swimming, the touchscreen will lock to prevent any accidental presses since touchscreens in water don't exactly play well. Since the touchscreen is locked to stop your session, you can press both the digital crown and the side button at the same time, which will pause the workout, and then you'll rotate the crown to eject water from the watch. And then once you're done with your session, your workout summary will include a breakdown of your stroke type by distance, total time, total distance, calories, laps, heart rate, as well as calories. Then you'll be able to see your average pace and strokes as well as automatic sets, which shows uninterrupted sets without rest periods. And then it will also show your stroke type per set as well as rest periods in between each set, which I found to be quite accurate. And then below that, you can see your splits and then Apple's version of a heart rate graph. So the first thing that you'll notice is that just like many of the other activities, the Series 5 took a little while to lock on to heart rate. This time it was about 40 seconds. And then after reading high for a little bit, it settled in around two minutes into the session. And then from here on, overall, it followed the trends throughout the session. However, what you may notice is that there's gonna be some gaps as I started some of the laps. The other wrist-based heart rate sensor that I was using didn't have these gaps, so this was kinda of interesting to see. So on this next example, we see that gap at the beginning of the session, and then the rest of the session fared a bit worse for the Series 5, again, even compared to another wrist-based optical heart rate sensor. So even though swimming can be a tougher challenge for wrist-based optical heart rate sensors, there's probably some room for improvement there. But overall, heart rate was just kind of hit and miss for me. So that kind of left me wondering if there are some other things going on. So I even switched wrists while making sure to change the setting in the app, as well as even switch from the silicon van to the sport loop. But I still had some of those inconsistencies. And I'm not saying that heart rate was all bad by any means. Okay, so to wrap things up, this was a pretty interesting review for me because like I was saying earlier, I kind of went into this thinking that this was going to be a pretty easy review. I would go ahead and test the battery life uh, with the always on display as well as disabling it and then also test the fitness and sports side of things and then compare that with the Series 4 and those things should line up the same but it kind of turned into this rabbit hole of me trying to figure out why the Series 5 wasn't quite performing as well as the Series 4. But even with these quirks, the heart rate sensor in the Series 5 is still a pretty decent heart rate sensor, but it just doesn't seem to be quite as accurate as the Series 4. The Series 5 brings about that always-on display, which is great to use, especially in a fitness scenario, and having the ability to turn that feature off to extend that battery life even further is pretty awesome as well. But if you're a Series 4 owner, I would say that the only compelling reason for you to upgrade to a Series 5 is going to be with that always-on display, and if you're okay with that gesture to wake, then I'd say go ahead and save your money for the moment. Anyhow, if you liked the video or found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button down below and also make sure to subscribe for plenty of other fitness and sports tech videos that are coming soon. And in the meantime, have fun with your fitness and we will see you in the next video.